talking about buck sweep tonight. Um, and I'll just get right into it since uh, I'm already short on time. We've been uh, Delaware wing tee for the past 10 years. We have transitioned slightly into some uh, shotgun wing tee and uh, added some spread concepts. We, we do run buck sweep from multiple formations uh, and, and use multiple ball carriers and also run it similar to what, uh, you know, the Gus Malzahn Auburn buck sweep <laughs> with the H back uh, out of no wing formation. So we've kind of transitioned a little bit from just being Delaware wing tee, but from a drill and coaching standpoint, nothing's really changed in our approach to the play. Um, even though we have a number of spread uh, concepts, in our offense now, including RPOs and whatnot, we're still a run heavy team. Uh, we still pride ourselves on being a C gap uh, run football team. And that's our identity. And the reason I'm saying that is because the buck sweep is a C gap run play. And if that's the, the, the staple of your run game, then it's not so much about what you're doing offensively, but it, it's how you're doing it. And um, I just believe that our kids understand that their identity is we want to be dominant in those B and C gaps when we run the football and, and by being able to block down and kick out, that gives us an advantage. So um, I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll talk about the play a little bit. I'll show you a few clips uh, that I have on here, and then we'll go into the drill work from the center and guard um, standpoint. And uh, – uh, drills we do in the gym, you know, in the off season, and then uh, what we do on the field uh, during the season. And if we have time, uh, I'll go through and talk about each position and answer any questions you have. Uh, feel free to ask questions during the presentation and, and uh, you know, we'll field them and I'll try to give you the information you need. Um, like I said, we're Delaware Wing T. So if you're looking at what I have on the screen, the formation's red. Uh, people call things differently. They have all different versions of wing tee. I'm going to speak with Delaware terminology, and you'll just have to kind of convert it uh, or ask questions. If I start from the play side and work across with the play side wing, uh, we tell our wings, um, you know, their alignment rule varies on what kind of defender they have and where he's aligned. Uh, typically, it's a one-by-one -one alignment, but we want him to block the first man inside. And so if he looks in there and sees the seven technique inside eye of the tight end, he, that's still going to be his aiming point uh, before he actually goes vertical to get a linebacker. You can see we've got a 3-3 three, three or 3-5, three, whatever you want to call it, um, up here on the screen just for uh, the sake of, of going through the play, and that's what we used to be defensively. So if you uh, want to know about different defensive fronts or techniques and how we approach it, like I said, just ask at any time. Uh, but the wing has to block down that, that – that gap there's no question about it um he, he's not only a ball carrier for us he has to be a physical kid uh, we can personnel it to put bigger kids there and we do sometimes but uh, we try to make our ball carriers tough and make them be good down blockers in our offense uh tight ends rule is gap down backer um that's that's the rule we use delaware terminology uh he's obviously looking for any defender on his inside eye to that gap all the way down to a five technique um, and then the down rule, he would be on, on the next man in, you know, over the tackle, which would be a four technique. And then he would work his way up to a linebacker if, the, if that guy was uncovered. Um, the tackles rule is also gap down backer, but now he has a special situation where he can, in fact, go all the way down to a gap. Uh, if we have an a gap defender that needs to be taken care of. All right. And what we do is, if the center makes a Oreo call, uh, that tells the tackle to come all the way down and help him with that A gap defender so that he is not uh, beating the center across his face and getting in the situation where he's, you know, disrupting the backside guard, disrupting the play. All right. So if he gets an Oreo call, he's all the way down the A gap. If not, and, uh, and that guard's uncovered, then he will continue up to the next linebacker. All right. When you look at the backside tackle, um, his rule, and, and that's anybody from the tackle out, their rule is to go to cutoff. And that, that means avoid any first-level defenders and get to that second level 
And what's going to happen is he may not get those backers cut off. He may totally miss backers, but he's going to keep working on to the next level. And we want to go on and knock those defenders across uh, the formation, across what's going on. And so it becomes more like a zone concept where – or the halfback now, if he can get to the second level, he sees that and he can make that cut back. And ideally, that's really what we want. We always want that back to be able to cut uh, to the weak side shoulder of a defender. And we feel like it gives us bigger gains and big plays and uh, working against the flow of the defense can be explosive for us. So uh, we do a lot of drills to teach that. Uh, cutoff blocks at all positions, whether it's tackle, tight end, wing, uh, you know, outside receiver, all those cutoff blocks, we teach them really to hustle, get flat and hustle as hard as they can to get to that second level defender and just wash them on by the action so we can hit that cutback. Um, when talking about the guards, you know, the front side guard is going to be pull kick. That's always his rule. Who is he pulling and kicking? Well, whoever's head up to outside the wing, that's going to be his kick guy. <coughs> And keep in mind, I'm talking to you from a tight end wing or a tackle wing standpoint. If it were to the, the nub side or the non-tight end side over there, it would be the same thing. You know, the kick guy would still be head up to outside uh, the wing. Um, in, in what we do is we, we're very multiple formation-wise to try to get ourselves in position to find a defender, number one, that we feel like doesn't play force very well. We want to kick him. And uh, – and number two, you know, give us give us an opportunity to run to run the ball, not necessarily needing a tight end, or you know, giving us the opportunity to rest certain personnel and still be able to run Buck Street and be successful with it. All right, so pull kick is the front side guard. The back side guard is going to be pull wall. Um, the wall technique is, you know, we're going to show the the technique and the drills and the video. But the biggest thing for him is to get to the down block of the wing, okay? And when he gets there, we want him to strike a match. And uh, what we're saying there is we want him to come right off the hip of the wing's down block, have his eyes inside right away for scrape defenders, scrape linebackers. And uh, if nothing shows, he can work his eyes back to head up to outside. Uh, if you're looking at this particular play on this formation, you know, ideally he would be fitting for the corner who's sitting in the hole right there. But, you know, those guys don't sit still on the snap of the ball. He has to go inside out with his eyes. And we'll talk about the uh, pull technique um, here shortly. Um, all right, receivers. Uh, their rule is always if you're to the play side, you block on or stalk block, whatever you want to call it. If they're to the back side, they're going to cut off. We call it a touchdown block uh, because if he gets across the formation and he, he pushes that safety or corner, whomever it may be, on across and gives us that cutback lane, we feel like we've got a shot to get there. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, who's going to block the backside corner, the guy who's aligned on the receiver? What we've done in the past is I've made the quarterback responsible for that guy. So once he hands that ball off to the halfback, you know, his job is to hustle. And, and to get downfield. He's sprinting to get downfield because when it cuts back, I want him there to be able to disrupt the corner, get in the corner's way. And I've had kids that did it very well. Um, I've had I actually had one kid who went on and, and, and played in the Ivy League. And I tell you what, now he'd go downfield and he'd, he'd look at my guy up and try to knock him down. And, um, you know, people, you know, might think, well, aren't you concerned about him getting hurt? Are you concerned about this? You know, no, not at all. You know, with the quarterback, my thing is you get hurt when you're standing around. You get hurt when you don't see things coming. You know, when you're running downfield as hard as you can and you're looking somebody up, I've never, ever seen anybody get hurt doing that. So that's the big thing for us. And uh, it's it's a great source of pride for those kids. You know, so you don't – you know, if, if a quarterback's not a guy that can really help you in the run game, uh, you know, put him in the gun, let him be a ball carrier, you know, at least he can hustle downfield and block somebody to be a blocker. And uh, that's just our philosophy on that. Uh, in the backfield – you know, the quarterback, we try to keep him off that midline right there um, to keep him out of the fullback's way because the fullback's rule is to block a gap out. Uh, we want him to run straight ahead. It should look like guard trap because, you know, in the wing tee, those are your complementary plays. You have a play. You have a counter to the play. You have a pass off of it. 
And so in, in the 20 series or, or buck sweep, you know, it's, it's guard trap, which, I, you know, almost everybody runs some version of a guard trap. But we try to keep him on the midline. And what will happen is if that B-gap defender, if he is a squeezer or trying to chase the guard or come flat, if he will just run straight, he doesn't have to run into A-gap. That defender will intersect him. He'll come to him. So, you know, the biggest mistake the fullback wants to make is he wants to run off the midline and he wants to go, you know, run at the defender or run at a gap because that's his rule. And what happens is that guy will actually get inside him and create, create issues. Um, so we're, we're aiming straight ahead, you know, Brown's by the center, thinking that our left shoulder pad right there is going to, is going to hit the uh, thigh board of the, of the squeeze defender. If he doesn't squeeze, if he, if he loops or whatever the case may be, well, he's not going to make the play. We're not, we're not concerned with it, and we'll run on through. Uh, so that's the big challenge for the fullback is to stay on that track and stay straight ahead right there. Uh, halfback getting the ball, whether he's in a backfield formation like 100 or 900 or whether he's coming from a wing, uh, you know, the timing has to be there. We want to snap the ball when he's in 100 in this case. Um, so, it, you know, like I said, I'm using Delaware terminology, but when he gets – uh, behind the tackle to B gap, we want to snap the ball so that he's already in that same relationship as if he were standing in the backfield. Okay, and you can see I've got the lines drawn for the halfback carrying the ball. We want him to get that horizontal stretch as good as he can before he sticks his foot in the ground and works vertical. Uh, and now, you know, like I said, if he can get to that second level, he has his shoulder square where he can make that cut, whether it to the right, to the left, stay straight. You know, he's, he's especially got the opportunity to hit that cut back behind somebody's uh, cutoff block to uh, hit the big play or the, the home run. So, um, you know, I have down there, if you look where it says quarterback reverse out play side at five or seven o'clock, I use the clock uh, to talk to kids for a long time. Guess what? Nobody knows what five or seven o'clock is anymore because they all have digital uh, you know, devices. So I'm not sure how effective that is anymore. So what I do is we get on a, we get on a white line on the field or a line in the gym. We step on this side of the line or we step on that side of the line. And that's how I teach it. Uh, I don't even use the clock anymore, like I said, because it's, you know, it's out of date. I guess, I guess it's, that, that's passed us by. Um, but we want him to keep the non-handoff, the non-ball hand in his stomach on his belly button, want to extend it, the ball uh, with his hand. And I, I call it putting, the, putting it in the oven. Uh, because if you were to put something in the oven, you'd pull the door down, and then you would slide it carefully right exactly where it needs to be without touching either side of the oven and burning your hand. And uh, that's the biggest thing. He needs to have his eyes uh, on, the, on the pocket, on the belly button, the running back. And he needs to go put it in the oven before he moves on and does anything else. So that's kind of the coaching point on that, uh, just very quickly. All right, let me uh, – let's, let's move on and look at a couple clips real quickly, if I can figure out how to – there we go. All right, here's a photo I took of uh, uh, the last school we were actually at. It's a, it's a semifinal game, and the, the person on the sideline just caught this perfectly. Uh, when you're talking about buck sweep, you look there, you've got the, the, the two guards and the ball carrier, okay? And uh, this happens to be a quarterback buck sweep where we faked something going left and ran uh, 21 or buck sweep to the right. And if you look at the pull kick guy, you can see his shoulders. His shoulders are very vertical right here, okay? And, and that's exactly what we want. So he's done a good – that means he's done a good job of getting depth. And the biggest thing uh, for these guards when they pull and kick and pull and wall on buck sweep is to gain depth initially so that they can get this look. So number 64 there, he could be a fullback. He could be an H-back. You know what I mean? Everybody should look just like that when they're getting ready to kick somebody out. All right? He, he can adjust to whatever this defender decides to do. Now, when we are in the wing team, we run buck sweep, we're saying we're going to kick this guy, okay? But if it were a situation where we didn't have a down block of a wing, which you can kind of see his backside, you know, right there at number one, um, 
he's already he's blocked it down he's created that and, and you can see how close the pulling guard is we talked about striking that match and i'll come back to that here shortly but you know 64 is in great position if that if that defender was trying to come in and get inside him hard that would be an easy adjustment for him however if he was flat and his shoulders were to the sideline there's no way he'd be able to make that adjustment on that defender getting inside of him. So that's a, that's a great photo. It just, it just was one of those things that just kind of happened, but it shows – it's a testimony of the fact of how well Coach Stevens, who's the head coach, coaches those guards and, and what kind of players those kids were. And uh, you can see they're not very big. I mean, those guys are, are, are tough kids who are coachable and runners and hitters. And, uh, of course, the guy carrying the ball is pretty dang good, and that makes all the linemen better. So when you look at the pull wall defender, all right, you can see the same thing. His shoulders are going vertical, okay? His eyes are inside, just exactly where we want them to be. Now, if number eight, the defender decided to fit right there, he'd, he'd be in great shape. There'd be no, no problem to make an adjustment right there. The biggest mistake the, the wall guard makes is he doesn't get depth initially. He runs flat, and then he creates space between himself and the down block when he goes to turn up and wall, and that creates the, the, the issue of the scraping linebacker running through and making that play in the backfield. So, you know, by getting the shoulders vertical right there and, and, and getting his eyes inside, there's, there's no way that's going to happen. So that's, that's a great job by him. 